Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 16 of the Halloween Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 Halloween themed Cricut projects in 20 days. 10 of the projects are designed by me and 10 are guest designer projects from some of my crafting friends. Today's project is by Amy Romeo Crafts and it's this faux leather key fob wristlet with heat transfer vinyl detailing. Amy is a lifelong crafter and jewellery maker who loves to create and share her original designs, projects and tutorials with the worldwide crafting community. Amy has dabbled in many creative pursuits over the years, but her current favourites are cricket crafting, laser cutting and sublimation. Her passion for teaching and sharing is evident on her crafting blog, amyromeo.com and her YouTube channel, Amy Romeo. These key fob bristlets would be a fun Halloween gift to make and I love the extra details from the heat transfer vinyl. If you're new to cutting faux leather with a Cricut, keep watching to find out how it all works. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. Register a free ticket for the Halloween Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23. If you're already registered, check for an email from me with subject line Halloween Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you've been sent throughout the countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down this page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23 bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Halloween Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. All downloads come in zip folders. You will need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Hi, this is Amy Romeo of the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. And I'm so honored to be a VIP contributor for the Halloween Craft Countdown this year. If you're new to me and my world, I like to create fun and exciting faux leather crafts using a Cricut. And in this project, I'll be showing you how to make these wristlet key fobs with a Halloween theme. You can wear them on your wrist and attach your keys. And I also designed some really fun little charms for these projects as well. So if you're ready to learn how to make these using your Cricut, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go over the tools and materials I'll be using today to make these key fob wristlets from faux leather. I'll be using the Cricut Maker, but you could use the Maker 3, the Explore Air 2, the Explore 3, or even the Cricut Joy, as long as you have the 12 inch long mat. So I'll be making this project today using faux leather and heat transfer vinyl. The faux leather is available in sheets like this or on rolls, it's really up to you. There's some really pretty prints and patterns or you can use solids. This design has two layers of faux leather, one on the top and one on the inside. So I'm going to use two different patterns to add some interest, but you can choose whatever materials you'd like. For the heat transfer vinyl, you could use glitter or solid or foil. It's really up to you. I'll use a purple strong grip cutting mat to cut the faux leather and then a green standard grip mat for the Cricut to cut the heat transfer vinyl. If you are using the Cricut Joy, the green mat that's 12 inches long will work just fine. I'll use some blue painter's tape to help me get good cuts on the faux leather by taping it down to the mat. And then to press the vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using a Cricut Easy Press Mini, but you could also use a regular Easy Press or even a larger heat press. Then to glue the keychains together, I'll be using some craft glue. The Beacon Fabri-Tac is great, or the Barely Art Glue is good. Really whatever fabric or craft glue you have on hand. And then I'll be using some tools like scissors, some jewelry making pliers when I show you how to attach an optional tassel, some 10 millimeter jump rings for the tassel, and then some Sharpie markers to color the edge, the white edge of the faux leather to help make the keychain look coordinated and professionally finished. Then to attach the key fob wristlet hardware, these are one inch key fob wristlet pieces and they often come with a set of pliers 
These are special rubber tipped pliers that I'll show you how we clamp the little ends here onto the edges of the faux leather wristlet. These come in a lot of different colors. So there's black for Halloween. You could even buy jump rings that are black if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and hop into Design Space and we'll get our faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut out for this project and our wristlets assembled. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and then Upload Image and you'll browse to where the unzipped SVG files are for this project. I already have them uploaded here. There's the wristlets file and there's also the charm file. Both of these look different, but they're made the same way. There's faux leather on the bottom layer and heat transfer vinyl on the top. So we'll start with the wristlet file. I'll click on it to select it and then add it to the canvas. And you'll see I've created two different designs for you. And you can cut these from any color or pattern of faux leather or heat transfer vinyl that you'd like. So there's a top layer of faux leather, which is this bottom orange, and then there's a bottom layer of faux leather. You can cut both of these layers either from the same faux leather or from two different prints and patterns. So I'm gonna cut this one with the spider webs in this demonstration, but keep in mind that you'll cut both of these the exact same way. You can choose whichever one you'd like to start with. So the first thing I want to do is delete this other design off of the canvas. So I will click on ungroup, and then I'll be able to select this design and then delete it off the canvas. So we only have the first design available for us. So we have three layers to cut. One is faux leather, one is white heat transfer vinyl, and then one is black. So I'll go ahead and click the make it button. And Design Space will separate our layers onto three different mats for us. The first thing I want to do is click on mirror for each mat because heat transfer vinyl and faux leather cut in reverse. So let me go ahead and do that. And then what I like to do is drag each of these shapes a little bit apart from the edges of my mat and also apart from each other. So this is the faux leather mat. And if I wanted to cut both of these layers from the exact same color of faux leather, then I would place them closer together and then just place one larger piece of faux leather down on the mat. But in this instance, I want to cut both of these from different colors. So I will space them apart just a little bit and then I'll cut them separately and we'll tape them separately, but they'll cut at the same time. I'll repeat the process for the two vinyl mats, just sort of pulling them away from the edges of the mat. There we go. And then I'll click back on the faux leather mat. I always like to cut that one first and I'll click continue. I like to cut faux leather using the faux leather paper thin setting. If you don't have this setting on your Cricut, you can click browse all materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search and find this setting. The vinyl settings I'll use for these two vinyl mats depend on the vinyl that you're selecting. So if it's glitter vinyl, I like to use the glitter vinyl setting. For regular heat transfer vinyl, I use vinyl. You could also use foil iron-on. Washi sheet is another good vinyl setting for intricate cuts. So I'll use the faux leather paper thin setting for the faux leather mat, and I'll choose more as my pressure. So I already have the fine point blade loaded in my, my machine. That's the machine that comes standard with any of the Cricut machines. So that's why we're able to cut faux leather with any of these machines. So let's go ahead and hop back over to my overhead camera and we'll start to cut out the mats. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna cut the faux leather mat first. And what I did was I cut two long strips off of these sheets of faux leather. I cut them so that they're larger than the shape of our wristlet that's going to cut. The wristlets are one inch wide by 11 inches long. So this is a little bit longer on both sides, but it will still fit on our mat. And then I'm just going to place these pretty side down on my mat right in the spot that I noted on the mat preview screen that I placed my shape so they would cut. So I'll press that down with my fingers. If you have a brayer, you can roll over them too. So there was one centered on the two inch mark and there was one centered on the four inch mark. And now what I'm going to do is use the blue painter's tape and I'm going to tape around on all sides on these pieces. And I have some pieces of tape. I like to reuse these since I use a lot of blue tape and that helps me get a little more use out of each roll of tape. So I'll just tape down on all sides.
And now this mat is ready to cut. So we'll go ahead and load it into the Cricut. And we have our faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure all set to go. So we'll begin the cut. So when cutting faux leather, it's always important to make sure the cut ran through completely before you unload your mat because you can rerun the cut if necessary and some faux leathers require multiple cuts. So I haven't unloaded the machine yet. I'm just going to use my sharp weeding tool and just get in underneath the corner of one of my cuts carefully and see if it cut all the way through. And it looks like it did, but if it didn't, that's okay. We can just press the cut button again and that will rerun the cut. If you're using the Cricut Joy, the rerun option will be on the screen in Design Space. So if your cut did not go all the way through, don't worry, just repeat the cut, check it again before you unload the mat, and you can rerun the cut as many times as needed. So I'll go ahead and unload the mat, and I'll remove the cut shapes for the wristlet. And this is a good time to look at the edges and see if there's any little fuzzies or little strings. Let's see if you can see that there. There's a little one and you can trim up the edges if necessary with some small curved scissors or embroidery or crafting scissors. So now that I have both of these shapes cut for the wristlet, I'm going to put these aside and now we're going to cut the vinyl mats. So the first vinyl mat that I'll cut is just a regular white vinyl and we'll place this shiny side down. And I'm using the vinyl setting for this particular material. So I'll pull this off the mat and set it aside so I can start weeding it. And now I'll cut the glitter vinyl. This is a Caesar glitter vinyl and it's a little on the thick side. So I like to use the glitter vinyl setting with default pressure and then I will repeat the cut one time. So I finished weeding out my two vinyl layers and they're all set to go. I have a heat pressing pad to protect my surface and I have the solid orange faux leather rectangle on my mat. This one that's for the underneath of the wristlet, I'll just set aside until I'm ready to glue. I also have my Easy Press Mini set on the low setting. If you're using a regular Easy Press, I would start at about 265 degrees. So what I'm going to place first is the white layer and if you cut this from a different color, it doesn't matter, just put this one with the spider webs on the bottom first. I'm just going to sort of eyeball it and line it up. The edges of the spider webs are designed to touch the edges of the faux leather shape. And then you want to have about the same amount of space between these skulls and the edge of the faux leather. You want to have the same amount of space at the top and the bottom. And that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to cover with my little piece of Teflon sheet. If you have a large piece of Teflon sheet that you use for t-shirts, that's perfect. This is just one that I've trimmed to size because I make a lot of small things like earrings and keychains. So I'll just go ahead and cover this up and I'll begin to press. As I'm pressing, I'm trying to apply about seven to 10 seconds of pressing onto each of these vinyl shapes. I'm moving the mini iron around, but if you're using a regular easy press or a heat press, then you don't need to move it around. Now that I've applied even heat and pressure all the way down the wristlet, I'll just start to slowly peel away the cover sheet. If as you're peeling the vinyl lifts up, then just place the cover sheet right back down and repeat pressing in five second increments. That looks pretty good. And now I want to line up the bats and the spiders. And I wanted to show you when I designed this, I designed it so that there would be a spider on each of the spider webs. So just make sure that you're placing it in the right spot. So first, let me show you what this looks like. 
So this one, the spiders are sort of in the spider webs, but then the bats are overlapping the skull. So that's not the right way. So we'll flip this right back around. And that way looks better. So just sort of place it in position. And then we'll cover again with our cover sheet and repeat pressing. And now we'll again begin to very carefully peel back the cover sheet and make sure that our glitter layer is sticking down to the faux leather. If you are using glitter like I am, you may see a few little specks of glitter that are stuck to the faux leather. That's because the faux leather is warm. If you give it just a few seconds to cool, you can generally pick those away with a weeding tool. And then your, your entire design will be glitter free. So this looks great. I'm done with the Easy Press Mini, so I'll turn it off and set it aside. And now we want to glue the front and the back keychain shapes together. So I'll be using my Fabri-Tac glue. As I mentioned, you could also use a craft glue like Barely Art glue. And I'll just flip this one over and apply glue to the entire back side. I wanna get the glue very close to the edges, but not all the way to the edge because there will be some natural seepage that occurs when we press the two layers together and that will help push the glue up to the edges without seeping out. Now that I have glue all on the back side here, I'm just going to apply the other faux leather rectangle shape on the back. And you'll want to take your time with this, lining up the edges so there isn't any overlap and you don't see one of the shapes on the bottom, on the top, etc. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And now what we wanna do is let this dry under something heavy, and that's gonna really help us get a nice tight seal and seam on the edge of the two pieces of faux leather. So I'm just gonna place something heavy on it. We'll let this dry for a few hours. What I'm going to do now is return to Design Space, and I'm going to open up the charm file, and those will cut exactly the same way the wristlet did. There's a faux leather shape on the bottom and there's a vinyl shape on the top. So I will get those shapes cut out and then I'll show you quickly how to assemble the charm and then we'll put together our keychain. So for the bat charm, I have the two little faux leather shapes, the front and the back already cut out. And you'll see there's a little small hole that we're going to use to attach a jump ring and then attach this to our key ring. So on your little bat, you'll want to match up. There's also a cutout for that hole. So what you wanna do is match it up with the hole on the faux leather charm before you press. So I wanted to mention before we glue the charm, this bit of news also applies to the faux leather wristlet leather piece itself. It's important to press vinyl first and then glue the two pieces together. That's because if you glue first and then you press with heat, the heat can cause the glue in between the two pieces of faux leather to bubble and it could make your vinyl lift and it'll just ruin the overall look of your piece. So always press first and then glue. Again, just take a moment to line up all the shapes. You can also use some small curved scissors just to trim up any edges. So what I'm going to do now is place my charm underneath the heavy item and then let this dry at the same time as the faux leather wristlet. When both pieces are dry, I'll show you how to attach the wristlet hardware and then attach the charm and the tassel to the wristlet. So the faux leather pieces have had some time to dry with the glue in between and you'll just want to Take an opportunity to check the edges and make sure that the edges are a nice tight seam. And one way we're able to get this nice finished edge is because we place this under something heavy. It's hard to see, but 
it really looks like it's one piece of faux leather now instead of two. So I just wanted to show you, I've already started with a color coordinated Sharpie marker and going and going along and coloring this edge orange. So you could do black if you wanted to. I'll show you this one. This one I colored black on the edges, even though it's green on the front and on the back, but it's a nice way to make the edge look finished and professional, especially if the two colors of faux leather don't match on the edges. For example, on this one, one of the pieces is white on the edge and one of the pieces is orange. So when I color it all orange, it just looks finished and it really adds that look of a seamless piece of material. So to do this, I usually put it flat because I don't want the Sharpie to get on the wrong part of the faux leather, but I'll just hold it up here so I can show you, just basically coloring the edge. Maybe make sure you can see that. And then I did the same on our little charm that's double-sided. I just have this little piece to go. So again, if you colored this with black on the edges, you'd have a different look. So now that we have our pieces of faux leather completely dry, it's time to assemble the wristlet. So all we're going to do is fold this in half. And then I'm going to use the one inch key fob hardware. I'm going to use the black one. I think that's kind of fun. And all we're gonna do is put the edges of the wristlet together and then slide them in as far as they will go inside of the hardware piece. Can you see that? And you'll wanna pay attention to the edge, make sure the edges are neat and touching. And then this is just a tad tricky, but we're going to use the large pliers that are rubber tipped on the end and they're rubber tipped so they don't scratch the hardware. So if you're using different pliers because you don't have these, these are relatively inexpensive on Amazon, but if you don't have these, then you'll want to put a washcloth or a paper towel on your hardware when you're clamping down so you don't scratch it. All I'm going to do is just kind of get this in the jaws and we'll squeeze. So the back piece has some teeth. Let me show you on this one. The front is pretty and finished and the back piece has some little teeth and those are gonna grip into the faux leather. So this is what that looks like finished. Looks really cute. And now all we need to do is add um, a little optional tassel and our little charm. So the charm again has that hole and I'm going to use a fun black jump ring. Sorry for the marker on my fingers. Just gonna use two pliers and open this up Open that up and then I'll slide on my little charm and then I'll slide it onto the jump ring or the key ring part of the wristlet. Let's see, that looks pretty cute. And then I'll also add a tassel. So a lot of these faux suede tassels, they come with a gold or a silver top. I haven't been able to find any that have a black top yet. But I think what I'm going to do is just stick with a black one with a silver top. And again, I'll use that black jump ring and just attach that onto the wristlet. And there we have it, our Halloween wristlet is complete. I hope you enjoyed this project and you're going to make some Halloween faux leather wristlets yourself. I also have some matching earrings and a tutorial for those earrings if you're interested. I have them free on my blog and I'd be happy to email you a link to download the earring SVGs and a link to watch the video tutorial if you're interested. Just click the button below this presentation to get all the information. Thanks so much for watching. And again, it's been an honor to be a VIP contributor for the Halloween Craft Countdown. Enjoy the rest of the event. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a Halloween faux leather key fob wristlet with HTV. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more cricket crafts and Halloween fun. I hope to see you tomorrow for day 17 of the Halloween Craft Countdown. Don't forget the link to get the cut files for today's project 
is craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23, but they are only free to download for 24 hours after this video goes live. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.